Alex says, what tip size do you recommend for high build primer? Uh, anywhere from 1.8 is a good size to 2.0. Um, however, you could use a 1.3 or 1.4 tip size for high build primer if you reduce your primer, maybe 10%, give or take. Add 10% more reducer than normal, thin it out. Uh, you're going to have to give it a couple extra coats, but it will work. Um, and that's something I taught early on, early, early on in the VIP course back in 2010. It's just a, a quick hack. So you don't have to go spending extra money to get a, a larger tip size, but some people like to spray it on heavy, um, you know, at one shot. So if you're looking to just mix up your 2K filler primer as usual uh, with minimal reducer, then a 1.8, I, I normally go with a 1.8 uh, or 2.0. 2.0, I feel, I feel like it's a little overkill, but it still works. Um, so yeah. And then if you're shooting out of a 1.3, 1.4, you could just reduce it down and then just give it a couple extra coats. Hey, Tony, I painted my Jeep following your steps. Turned out fantastic. My question is clearing over my vinyl decals. Anything special I need to do first? No, you don't. Don't even sand them. Just clear coat right over them. So I would use, you could use um, a wax and grease remover very lightly, but I wouldn't even do that. I would use a glass cleaner sprayway glass cleaner make sure your decals are clean wipe it down and make sure you're using a cloth that has a very little lint maybe use a microfiber okay make sure there's no lint stuck on the edges of the decal because when you clear it you might have those little little lint there and you know it's going to be a pain in the butt to take out probably won't be able to take it out. You're just going to have to bury it with the clear coat. So just be careful. Just make sure that um, there's no lint on before clearing. That's pretty much it. Hopefully, um, and I do have VIP videos. So I'm not sure, Chris, if you're a VIP, but we, we have clear coated over a lot of uh, decals in VIP. Toyota Tacoma, um, you know, decals. Uh, some custom decals and motorcycles and whatnot. I mean, it just, as long as it's clean, use a good glass cleaner, no lint, clear right over it. Uh, what grid sandpaper should I stop at before shooting high build primer? Alex Wheeler, I'm not sure if you're a VIP. Uh, guys, I'm just going to put this link here for all you newbies just tuning in. Um, don't forget to grab your free training at learnautobodyandpaint.com. And if you want to join VIP, check out the special offer we have there uh, after you put in your email details. Super deal uh, to get access to VIP. Tons of content, over 250 hours of A to Z auto body. You're going to love it. Um, but as far as what grit to stop, you could shoot 2K filler primer over 150 grit, no problem. Okay, so 150 grit normally takes out... Uh, Peeling paint, fading, um, you know, cracking, pretty much most paint imperfections, unless you have some hardcore surface rust, then I would use an 80, uh, then go down to 150, and then shoot a 2K filler primer. So you could shoot a 2K filler primer over 150, 220, 240, 320. I wouldn't go any finer than that. 320 is kind of like an overkill, but you need a good tooth grit for your primer to stick to. These are sand scratches, by the way, when I do this, okay? You need a good tooth grit, okay? Coarse, and then this is like ultra fine. Ultra fine is here, 150, okay? I don't know, I'm just making this up, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm making this up, but this is basically tooth grit, sand scratches, however, however you wanna look at it. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helped. Atom X 88, it's just a different design in the nozzle head. Um, nothing too crazy, I believe. Um, it's just uh, a split nozzle for a more efficient fan pattern. But honestly, I, I've tried both versions. I haven't seen much of a difference. I think it's kind of like uh, a beta thing that they're doing, but it works good. Either, either way, the split nozzle works good. Um, oh, as far as talking about the Atom X88, Zula is doing a sale right now on all Atom X guns. Here's the Atom X88, actually. Here's the Blue Moon version. I'll just post the link on the StreamYard just in case you guys want to check it out. I think you're getting like 60 bucks off this. 
and free gear, not gear, but free uh, additional items um, until another for another day or so. So check out that link I just put in there. Zula. Primer or some other primer first on top of the epoxy. Do you like to put glaze over epoxy primer or use some other primer? Okay, so after you spray an epoxy primer, okay, it's recommended to spray a 2K filler primer on top of it right after flash. So say you let your epoxy set up for an hour, it's dried, it's cure. You can go ahead without sanding, spray your 2K filler primer on top of it. Okay, uh, and then you could block sand that down. Um, if you have, if you still notice any dents or anything, you could grind that area and you could do your body filler on top of that also. And then, you know, respray with 2K filler primer after you shape it. Um, but if you notice any chips um, or scratches, deep scratches that your 2K filler primer did not take out, you could definitely use a polyester putty. Um, a 1K or 2K, it doesn't matter. Um, here is a 1K polyester putty that I use. Dolphin glaze, it's called by Upal. Okay, and then here is a 2K, 2K glaze, which you, you mix a little, it's more of like a super creamy body filler. Okay, and uh, this you mix with a little bit of hardener and you could put that on deep scratches. So if you have deep scratches that your 2K filler primer didn't take out or rock chips, that's what you would use. This compressor would you recommend for a home garage? Well, if you're gonna be painting anything large, I, re I recommend a at least a 60 gallon so you have enough volume. This is what I have, 60 gallon um, Lowe's air compressor. Puts out enough CFM for me and you could paint the whole car, no problem. I painted the large good van project, which is sitting over there in this garage, okay? And the videos to that, I will be getting out this week on YouTube, guys. So we're missing two videos from that series uh, where we're actually doing the black single stage painting and the white single stage painting. Those videos I'm working on the next couple days. Uh, be prepared for a video um, later this week on that project. So I'll be sending you a link. So if you're not subscribed, guys, to learn autobodyandpaint.com, Make sure you're subscribed because we do send out an email reminder um, anytime we upload a video. So I'm going to... better to have a diaphragm spray gun air regulator? It, I mean, it's up to you. It's really up to you. It's, I wouldn't say it's better. Uh, I think I missed Kedis's question here. Do you think it matters the diameter of the fitting used to feed your gun? I see they make larger. So a quarter inch is big enough. Quarter inch is more than you need. Okay, this is the standard, quarter inch. Uh, I think this is what you're talking about. Okay, quarter inch and your three-eighths connection. Paint remaining in the cup after the first coat. I have to three and use a new paint or can I add and fill the cup again. So yeah, while you're painting, while you're painting guys, if you have extra fluid in your cup, you could just let it sit for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes until you're ready for your next coat, okay? Um, and that's an, on base coat. Base coats, you never mix hardener in base coat. If you're doing any kind of two-stage painting, base coats, okay? Uh, do I have any base coat here? Okay, so let's just say this is a, a white, this is actually a red base coat, okay? Red base coat, orange base coat. If you mix reducer to this one-to-one, -one, okay? Uh, you put it in your cup, you're painting. If you have leftover, you could just put it right back in the can and save it because base coat doesn't go bad. You're gonna wanna check the consistency before you use it again. You might have to add a little bit more reducer to it, um, but that's fine. But if it's clear coat that you're mixing up, okay, you're gonna have to throw the rest away because clear coat has your activator, your hardener in it, and it basically is gonna cure, it will cure. So clear coat, you also have, you know, a good three hour pot time. So you could mix it, it could be in your gun for an hour or so without really doing any major damage, but anything longer than that, I'd make sure I clean out your gun. Um, and, and normally after you, you, you paint, Okay, so it only takes 
25 minutes to 20 to 25 minutes to go around the car when you're clear coding one coat of clear. Okay. Give or take. So, you know, you do that, you're using the gun, you're going to want to let it sit and you're probably going to give it a 20 minute flash time. Maybe not even maybe 10 minutes, because by the time you go around the car, your car is already flash time, flash flashing as you walk around the car. So if you start at the door and it takes you 20 minutes to get back to the door or 15 minutes, give or take, then your door, give it another 10 minutes, will be ready for your second coat. So painting, you know, it's really a consistent thing when you're painting. You're really not waiting much while you're painting. But I would suggest that when you're done painting, and you're completely done, you know, and you got a little bit of clear left over, whatever, empty it out. And when you empty it, you want to squeeze your trigger. So the paint from inside the gun also comes out right? And then you clean it, take it apart and clean it. But before you take it apart, I like to just shoot my, um, where is my, I'm like, I'll have this filled. This is a tattoo, a tattoo bottle for when they put like alcohol in it. And they, you could just Google, you know, Google tattoo bottle, tattoo, uh, cleaner, whatever, uh, cleaning bottle, you know, they put the alcohol and they clean you, they clean you before they do the tattoo, right? Same thing. You could put lacquer thinner in here. I just like to wash my guns out like this before I take it apart, make sure I get that in there. So hopefully, um, hey, Tony, how do I paint the engine bay when changing colors? Very, very carefully. That's what my dad would say. But um, ideally, you'd want to take the motor out, pressure wash everything down, clean it with degreaser, pressure wash it, let it dry and sand the hell out of it, mask it and paint it. There's no other way to do it. Okay, if you're keeping the motor in, then Pressure wash the whole thing, degrease it down, make sure you get all the grease off the firewall, you know, off the inner fenders, everything. It has to be clean. That's the number one thing. Clean it like hell. Pressure wash it two times. All right. Uh, and then for all the piping and wires, what you could do is use tin foil to mask everything up because with tin foil, you can just get big areas and large. You might use a roll of tin foil, but you could just foil everything up. Maybe you're going to need some masking tape for some thin wires or whatnot. But do that, prime it, sand as much as you can, and paint it. It's pretty much it. There's really no shortcuts. Using single stage, my concern is about one cup is not enough for two coats. So mix a little bit more. It's always better to have more than not enough. But if you're trying to save paint, then mix a quart. Use it. If you have to mix another quart or a half a quart, it's okay to mix another quart of new new paint and spray it. But sometimes if you have leftover, say you're, you're spraying and you, you mix the quart and you have like a quarter of a quart left over in your gun and you know that you're going to need maybe a quart more, I would just mix up another quart on the side and then your remaining from the gun, dump into your pot and mix it all up. So you're kind of like, you know, intermixing the leftover in your gun in here. And then, and then you use that. And I show all that to you in my painting videos and VIP, like we cover all of it because I end up in situations like that, specifically with the van where I'm like, I needed to stretch paint at the end. Now I was running out of white. So I added more reducer to my last coat just to, just to stretch it. And it still came out amazing to sputter while spraying clear coat. Hmm. It could be a dirty gun. You could have some cloggage in the needle area up in here. Okay, if you got some buildup around here, that'll definitely cause sputtering. Um, so that's the number one thing I would check is cleaning, making sure your spray gun is clean. Um, again, maybe your neck filter. I don't know if you're using a neck filter that goes in here. You know, you got the little filters that if that's clogged up, that'll give you sputtering as well. So you may even want to remove your neck filter. Some people don't even like to put them in. I like to, I like to have them in there unless I'm shooting flake. Um, but if you remove it, make sure you're straining at the cup level. So make sure you're putting in, you're putting a strainer up top here before you're putting your paint in. If you don't have a uh, neck filter. Bondo before priming. Nope. You never want to put anything on Bondo before priming. So after you got your body filler, you're basically shaping it down, right? You're shaping it, you're sanding it, it's ready, you blow it off. You spray 2K filler primer directly on that. You don't have to clean it, just blow it off, okay? It could get wet, 
it could be outside. You could get rain on it. You could wash it with car soap. You know, maybe you're, you're, you know, it rained and you're washing your car. You, you wet your body filler for some reason. That's not going to hurt anything. You just got to make sure that before you prime it, it's soup, it's dry. Okay. Before you get back to shaping it and sanding it or anything, make sure the body filler is dry. You do not want to spray over a wet body filler. So I'm just trying to say, I'm making a point that moisture will not hurt it. Just make sure it's dry when you proceed doing your body work. Um, hey, have you ever heard of the Spray Gun Master Pro 44? If so, do you think it's any good for a beginner to learn? I recommend any add-on product, just different, different price point. Um, I've heard of it. I've never tested it, so I don't know. Maybe just Google some reviews on it, you know, pretty much. You know, it's, it's, maybe it's pretty good. I don't know. So um, if you're looking for a, a good, dependable DIY gun, I would look into the X20. And, you know, they're doing a sale right now. So you're you're going to probably be getting a lot, at least 50 bucks off the spray gun. Plus, you're getting the GunBud Ultra Lighting System, um, which sells for like 60 bucks on Amazon. This comes with every gun, um, every Atom gun. This is the X27. Um, hey. And um, have a great week, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Ciao.